Hi guys, if you can hear me. <laughs> uh, 10 years, wow. Let me see where I'm at here. I can't get my face to show up. So as usual, I'm having a little trouble. Um, let me see if this works. Nope, hang on. Uh. <laughs> Let me know if you can hear me. Um, hey, Wendy, Corey, thanks for being here. Um, let me know if you can hear me. I'm once again having trouble with my camera. What in the world is going on? Oh, gosh. <laughs> ah. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm glad you can hear me because I am not able to get my camera working. And every once in a while, this does happen. I put makeup on for nothing. <laughs> it drives me crazy that I can't talk to you though. I don't know why it's not working, but every so often it just like won't. So this is gonna be a live without seeing my face which is fine, I am sure. Um, let me come over here to my Soap Maker 3. I'm just gonna be sharing with you guys. So let me co uh, read some of your comments really quickly. Uh, Let's see. Yes, it, that that is helpful to know. Um, so, Oh, Melissa, you're working again and driving. Be careful. <laughs> We've been driving around town and we see all of these, uh, we're seeing all of these out-of-state plate, uh, plates for um, the eclipse tomorrow. So it's, it's huge here. Apparently, we are prime viewing because areas around us are going to be cloudy and we're supposed to have clear skies tomorrow. Um, Maybe I had it working earlier when I tested it. It was working fine. <laughs> like, so I don't know. I came in here and I tried to get on my YouTube. I had to disconnect my YouTube and, and use a stream key instead. It's like, what in the world happened from the time I was in here this morning? So anyway, let me see if I can get rid of this camera that is even just no use to us whatsoever. Um, there. Now you can see everything. All right. So any questions or how's my knee? My knee is better. <laughs> it, it was a rough couple days this week, guys. I had surgery on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday was rough. I, it, that was rough. 
and it was mostly being very nauseated from the anesthetic and just my calf and and hamstring pain that's where that's where the pain was mostly not really in my knee joint itself um. <laughs> Oh yeah. So thanks for asking, Wendy. Uh, but yes, I I am getting around a little bit better, and my husband has been taking very good care of me. But not too good a care of me because he was like, "Well, take it easy, but move around." <laughs> I have a history of blood clots, so he he won't he won't spoil me too much anymore. Um. All right, so I have my iPad up so I can see your guys's comments. And let's just dive right in because I've wasted enough time on trying to get this thing started. And uh, they say to jump in, and I never do. <laughs> the experts say to jump in. Uh, anything in particular you all are wanting to look at? Thanks guys. So far so good. It's, it's fine. It's gonna be a quick recovery. I'm like I said, I'm getting around pretty good right now. Um, it was just an arthroscopy and it ended up not being my ACL. It was weird. It's a weird story. It ended up not being my ACL. Apparently I had a cyst that was all encompassing my ACL. So she was able to just really easily remove the cyst. And um, I guess that's what it was. MRIs are not always accurate. All right, here is my recipe let's look at that real quick um i have a lot of folders who all has the amount of folders i have or do you have more <laughs> i have a, a folder for soaps that i've made every year so it so i know uh i change my recipe an awful lot so let's look at 2017 Let's just play around until questions come in. I always put the name of the soap here. I always do that, and that's so that when I print out, it feels like not only in my product page, I can um, like have exactly what I'm looking at, what what the scent is plus the item itself. So always I've always done that. Um, and then I just, you know, if I ever make clover fields, look, clover fields too, because I changed the recipe. <laughs> so I just keep track of what I've used. Now, if I don't change the recipe from one time to another, a lot of times my wax melts, I won't, I will move those. So I'll move a wax melt from 2018 and put it into 2019 if I make it again. Uh, but it's just, I don't know why I do that. I think it's so that my wax melt folder isn't overwhelming to me it keeps things a little bit separated and i can remember you know i can go back and see what i've done in the past oh you redid all your folders <laughs> so al's treasures do you have more or fewer folders now i have folders for like testing and uh different like I put the Z's in front of them so I don't have to see them every year and then I have asterisks and these A's are just so that they're on the top basically but those are my folders oh I have started printing out my recipes for uh, for making and I bought a laminator and I've started laminating my recipes that I make over and over and over again. And I think I'm really gonna like that because it felt like I was printing, wasting so much paper. And then I, you can take a permanent marker and mark on that and then take alcohol and wipe off your mark. So it doesn't smear. You can make your notes. And when you're done with that, you can alcohol and wipe off your marks and start over for the next time. So I'm really happy with the whole laminating thing. Uh, let's, I meant to have some like notes here that I would like if there wasn't any questions coming through, uh, but I didn't get to making any kind of notes of what we can go over. 
So I'm sorry. I, I'm going to blame it on the surgery thing. <laughs> I'm not very well prepared. Uh, way fewer. Oh, Diane. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. Way fewer, huh? I like my folders, guys. Clearly. My supplies, I have folders here. And I do update this so often. Now, when I first started, my lotions folder was very, very long because I didn't understand the difference between an emulsifier or a, you know, humectant versus, you know, whatever. So when I first started Soap Maker 3 and I first started making lotions, anything I put in a lotion kind of came into the lotion folder. And my bath bomb one is still kind of like that. I still have all of my baking soda, my embeds, my cream of tartar, cornstarch, all of these things probably could go in other folders, but I use those mainly for bath bombs. And so that's why that looks like those are, those are in that. Um, so April, what all can you do with Sewmaker 3? So it's a, it's a multi, multi stages. So I have, it, it is an inventory management uh, or a supply inventory management. So I can come in here and I can say baking soda. Anytime I purchase baking soda, I can come up to supplies and I can record a new purchase. And then I can say, well, where did I purchase it from? So I have all of these vendors that I have added. I can put the category. So the categories in here match the category in your supply order. And so let's just do baking soda since that's where we are. Baking soda. Now, when I do this, I usually input this into grams, uh, I or I mean ounces. And it's just whatever you're comfortable with. So if I'm gonna say I'm gonna do like 60 ounces, oops. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm ordering, like I can do four boxes of 16 ounce and I can do it that way. And it's like, okay, how much did it cost? It cost me $5. So it's taking this and it's telling me I've spent $20. If I pay tax, I will add tax here. If I pay shipping, I will add that here. If I have a discount on some of my suppliers, I will add that there. So this total equals my cost, whatever that credit card, whatever check, whatever you're paying, whatever, that should equal that to the cent. And then that will keep track of how much that baking soda, like this made up thing is 31 or 31 cents an ounce. Uh, so that keeps track of your inventory. So if I come into baking soda and I click purchases, I, that's all of my purchases. And what's nice about this is I can go through, let me put my glasses on so I can see. I can go through and see per cent. I used to, did that keep that? No. I used to pay eight cents an ounce for my baking soda. Look at that. Look at that. And then in July of 23, I paid 80 cents. So I'm back, I'm paying about 80 cents an ounce right now. That five cents, I think that was either, I think I had, that was a mistake. There's no way that's five cents an ounce. Oh, look at that. I did pounds here. I normally don't do pounds. But I do buy, uh, so anyway, what I'm trying to say is try to put that in, whether it's grams, pounds, ounces, whatever you're comfortable with, because that will allow you to see at a glance what you're paying for it because this is 80 cents a pound and not an ounce. And so that was my bad that I should not have done that. And it's really nice to be able to just go through and see where you're at with your um, ingredients. So you, it keeps track of how much you have. So again, I can come up here to purchases and I know I have 21 pounds left. Easy. Keeps track of that. It keeps track of the things that you make. So once I come over here, these are all of the products that I still have in stock. I know how many I made, I know the date I made them, 
and I know how many I have left. So it's also a inventory of stock made management system. I also use it for my taxes. Uh, let me kind of catch up on some of the things here, comments. So I do do a water discount. Um, uh, let's see. Yes, thank you. I forget your name, Alice. Uh, Diane, thank you. Um, that's my best friend's name, so I should remember that. It, it is very, very inclusive. So water discount on the soap. So let's go look at a recipe real quick. These are my recipes. I'm just gonna show you my recipes, guys. Normally, this is a recipe I'm sharing with you guys in a video upcoming. So don't worry about copying this because just watch for it and I will have it written down. Your lye water, so this is my recipe. So you input whatever you want. This is not just soap. I do candles, wax melts, lotions, bath bombs, anything. I do gift baskets everything that I sell, even if I was to sell bottles at a D stash, I put it in as a recipe so I can show that sale. Uh, this is my recipe. These are all of the percentages. You can go by amount, you can go by percent. This is a 35 ounce batch. It tells you uh, the weight of the whole batch. It tells you how many, uh, how much it cost, how many bars it has, how many, the cost per bar tells you all of that. In your lye water, I have been doing a two to one lye water ratio, so that is considered a water discount. I am recently changing that to 1.8 to one. Um, and so I can just come in here and say, okay, well, I wanna do 1.8. So you can see this water needed is nine, five, six, so a little over nine and a half ounces. If I change this to 1.8, now it's it dropped that by an ounce so it's a little different than the uh, what is that soap calc in the way that it it does the uh, lie discount here instead of calling it a super fat they do a lie discount which is really no different I don't think but I just do it a 5% um, super fat which is basically they're taking 5% of the lye needed away. Um, and then I there's a tab here for packaging. I have started putting labels. That is new this year. I've not put labels in here. Uh, I've just always been putting, I've, I've just considered that cost of goods, kind I, not cost of goods, I've, cost of doing business. But I really wanna know, that's 51 cents for those nine labels. I really need to start adding that into my uh, bar. On your, uh, I saved one. Let's look at, no, I don't wanna save that. Let's look at, oh, I'm in the wrong one. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. Let me minimize that. I was really confused by something and I wanna show you guys. That's not it. I'm not gonna remember which one it is. Where this soap, like this, is a dollar, I can't see, hang on. A dollar 26. Whereas when I opened it up here, this says a dollar 42. And it doesn't always match. And I wasn't really sure why that wasn't matching this initial cost per bar and this raw material cost. Why is that not matching up? And I'm not exactly sure the answer to that. But that is really important and something I look at quite often is how much is my material cost per bar. I look at that all the time when I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna charge somebody. Uh, so if anybody knows the difference, I thought maybe it's like, okay, well, if I made a change and I added my label after the fact, maybe that's why. I don't know. 
So uh, Mac users, I am doing, if you have a cheap Windows computer that you can download SoapMaker 3 on, you can do a screen share. So I have, oh, let's see. I don't know if it's gonna show. It's not. I have this Chrome remote and that is what I'm on. I am not working on this laptop. My SoapMaker 3 is on my other PC and this is just screen sharing. So you can get by with using SoapMaker 3 if you have a cheap laptop that you can download it to. So Diane, I do a 50-50. Yes, you can do a 50-50 lye water solution, but so that's a one-to-one. -one. So you need to add in the other portion of your water. So that's where that 0.8 or one comes. So if you're doing a two to one, uh, then you know you have to add that extra water in. And so that extra water you're adding in can be aloe vera or goat milk or water or what have you. And so that's where I'm starting to do the 1.8. I'm not adding as much extra water. And I can show you guys that real quick if you want. So Wendy, I you know, I thought about doing the clear gloss labels, but I didn't feel like the uh, the wording was coming across through my image as well. Are you having problems with this? That still can you get a good well plus my printer doesn't print on them very well, so that may be the problem. Grams is much more yeah, I agree. I weigh everything out in grams, but when I'm packaging them, I weigh in ounces. I haven't converted to, uh, like I'm, I'm drawing up a lotion. I do that in ounces still. I haven't done the grams yet. <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, <clears throat> I don't get rid of my recipes. I will keep all of my recipes I've ever made. Um, if I've not made a recipe, because I have like all these formulas to do, that's just things I found off, off the internet. You know, all these different things are just things I found. And I thought, you know, I want to try that. If I end up never making that, I will delete it. But I don't delete any of my recipes that I've actually made. Um, that makes me a little nervous to do. Uh, milk and pour. Let's see what's in there. Two things. <laughs> Those are old. Oh my gosh, dino in a bag. Oh my gosh, I used to do this melt and pour with a dinosaur inside a bag. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, what, any questions out there that we can talk about? I don't wanna just like be so random, but I'm sorry I didn't come up with like a game plan. I love this software. I love it so much. I, you know, obviously I'm in it every single day. Uh, let's see, what can we do? Reports, like they do have a tax and income summary report. So this is just my sales for the year. I come in here every month to, because anything you donate, uh, anything that you write off, anything you use for personal use, when you, when you take something out of uh, your inventory, I have to pay taxes to the state on that. So then I would just come in here and thinking, okay, well, I owe, let me try March. I owe 7% of 47 and I figure that out and I, I pay that to the taxes. So I do come in here and do that. And then to write something off, you just right click on it and remove that item. And then you say, why are you removing it? And I always put a comment in there. I don't know that it matters, but I always do, other than personal use. But if it, and you can do that with your actual products, or you can do that with any of your raw materials. You can you can remove from your um, uh, software. Thanks, Wendy. Eco tank. I've never heard of that. I have a I have a Xerox and that thing cannot print blue to save its life it, or green. It drives me crazy. 
everything comes out like royal blue, like deep royal blue. <laughs> it's <was> so annoying. <laughs> um, let's see. Any other questions, guys? Uh, thanks, Louise. Oh, because it's like really early there, right? Oh my gosh, you're awesome for being here. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Any questions, just let me know. I have never messed with graphs. I've never, ever messed with this. Uh, I've never messed with the conversion. I do have a video I taped forever ago about something. I don't really use it, but it's pretty cool. Let's see. And it, you can create a shopping list. Have you guys used the shopping list in here? So I can go through and I'm going to say, well, I'm going to make Aleppo and I'm going to make some bath bombs. I want that one and that one. And maybe I'm going to make deodorant. Oh, it didn't take it. I should really keep my glasses on. So you can just go through here and say, okay, this is what I'm going to make. Dino in a box bag. That's hilarious. I'm going to make some scrubs. Okay. And then what you can do is calculate your ship shopping list. You can say show only items that need to be purchased or not. So we're just going to create it. So this is everything I need to have in stock to make these recipes. If I want to click show only items that need to be purchased, you can see I have some citric acid in here, but all of this stuff, if I want to make these, is something I would have to purchase. Isn't that fun? I really should be using this. I think it's a really good little feature of the software. <clears throat> all right, uh, I will show you how I print that out. It's so easy. So you go to reports. Now, uh, tax and summary income summary, I should say. I just print it. Now, here's the thing, and I'm not gonna make the change because I always get confused on where I'm at, but when you go into uh, preferences, let's see, where am I at here? Oh, sorry, down here. I knew it was over here somewhere. There is a production and taxes Let me see which one it is. So there's two options. Your current market value or, uh, is that it? Is that the one I'm looking for? Or based on actual price of each lot purchased. You just need to choose one and my tax guy just said, stick with it. I don't think there's anything right or wrong about this and I think it does have something to do with you, how it uh, estimates the cost per bar or a recipe cost or whatever. Uh, but that determines, so once you make that choice, just stick with it. And then you can come up here, tax and income summary, and I just print this off. So this is something that he needs to, it shows what I've written off, it shows all of my purchase orders, all of my expenses that I've made, all of my, you know, I do Shopify fees. I do all of my expenses in here. The only thing I don't add in this is my travel expense expenses for uh, food or like when I go to the conference, I'm gonna have food and different things like that. That doesn't go in here, but my airplane, air flight, my hotel room, all of that is gonna go in as an expense. Uh, I have education. Uh, all of my money out for my business goes into a purchase, basically. And then he has to know how much raw materials, what is the worth of your raw materials at the end of the year. Uh, and I think that is right up here, total value of supplies. That is how much raw material I have. 
uh, in stock or in uh, actual products. So that number is really important. That plays a part in taxes. So I just print this off and I give it to them. Done. Uh, and then I, obviously I print off a different like little spreadsheet that I have that has you know my uh, cell phone and my all of my utilities and different things that he, I can claim. Um, but the, I, I do use it. I, a lot of people use QuickBooks with this. So QuickBooks is probably a little bit more robust. And But for my needs, I don't, I don't really need anything more than what I'm giving him. I think for me, QuickBooks is a little more than I, too much. It's just too much for me. I don't need it. <clears throat> I get most of, well, I basically, when I first started, I, you know, who did, I, who do I follow for most, I don't really follow people for soap recipes anymore. Uh, when I first started, I mean, back in the day, I watched uh, royalty soaps for a little while. I watched, uh, who did I watch back then? Missouri River Soaps. I watched her for a little. I don't really, I don't have the time to watch like I used to. But those two, I watched those guys for a little while. There was somebody else I watched a lot at the beginning. Brambleberry has decent recipes to get you started. But, you know, then you start getting more and more familiar with what's, uh, what different things bring to the soap recipe. I just redid my soap recipe guys like a few months ago and that's a video I have coming for you and I'm going to share my soap recipe. I already sh showed you here but um, I still want to tweak it just a little bit so I'm just going to tweak it. You know. Oh yeah taxes. Ugh. You're welcome Corey. <clears throat> All right, anything else, guys? Anything you want to see just to get an idea of how I use it versus how you can use it? Uh, you can show your sub batches here, and that way, like this has two sub batches. If you see samples, I don't have any of those left, and then the regular bars. If you show sub uh, sub batches. It just takes that down and has it on two two line items. So you have the samples here and the regular soap there. I don't tend to like to see all of that. I just want to see one jade, not two, but I don't know. I've I've messed with this consolidate products, but I don't really understand it, so I don't mess with that. There's actually a lot that I don't understand on this system. So, um, yeah, no, we never ever stop tweaking our recipes. <laughs> so when you say transfer, do you mean like, what do you mean, Corey? Hey, Amanda, welcome, welcome. I have a reuse before, but not a transfer. So transfer is if you have uh, a different location. So currently cancel I have my home location so these are all of the consignments of sorts that I've had in the past uh, clear I'm only in BBB which is Brits Blooming Boutique and these are the products that I currently have at that boutique and so when I want to transfer or take products to restock that I go up to home and I will right click and hit transfer and then if I hit two, I'm gonna take all of that. Then it says, where do you wanna transfer it to? And again, this is only if you have a different location. Then I would say, well, I'm gonna go down to BBB. I, you can add your price in if you want, that'll help you in the later. And then just transfer it over. And so basically it's just gonna take it from one bank or location to the other in the software. And there's all locations if you want to see all, but I like to just stay on home.
Oh, that's good, Wendy. Um, yeah, QuickBooks, I don't know. That's just another thing I'd have to learn. I have thought about it, but for now, I think I'm good. Uh, products, you can put prices in here, and I used to be really good at this, and I just kind of stopped. But here's my price list. And my big complaint is you have to go in every single time you make something and give it the price. So that's annoying to me. So <laughs> I wish it would, I wish there was one, a way of adding the price onto the recipe itself. Uh, I want to be able to come to my recipes. Let's just do dino in a bag again. This is hilarious. I want somewhere in here for me to say, I'm gonna charge $5 for this and that it will update the price, but it won't. So I have to come into price list every time I make it and enter in five. And then just, it, it just, it's not as user friendly as I would like. And you can though have a different price for wholesale. So if wholesale comes along, you can say, okay, that's 250. And you can see what's really nice is your percentage of your profit, which is, that that is really nice. Let's go back to retail. Nope, retail. So my percent of profit is 55. I really wanna get this to 80. I think they should be 75 to 80. So some of these at 55 is not very good. That means that fragrance oil probably cost me too much. <coughs> True, another expense, yeah. Um, but what's nice about this is when you are making a sale, let's just, all right, let's just say I sold two of those. You can, come up here, fill prices. And it will automatically fill what you have marked as your price. So that part of it is nice. And then when you're in making a sale, you can say whether you're charging tax or not. Uh, so if I just, it's telling me, I have consigned right here and it says, hey, wait a minute, are you wanna change that? Yeah, I do. I wish there was a way to keep that from popping up. So retail, Alexina is buying some bath bombs. If I'm doing a cash sale, I would do tax one and I would do included in tax rate. So this is still $12. I owe, I owe the taxes 79 cents. For cash sales, I usually do that. I, I, I take care of taxes for people. Um, if I don't, then I'm gonna be charging, well, where's it at? 12.84. But the fill prices is nice. I don't really understand all the tax rates. I uh, Maybe if there's different taxes for different states, I just don't understand that. So I just do tax one, it's 7% is how I have it set up in the, in the software. <clears throat> Anything else you guys wanna see? Molds are nice, you can say you can create new molds. I have quite a few in here. I don't really use most of them. But you can create a new mold and then when you're in your recipe, uh, let's see, bar soap. If I come in here to test two and I wanna resize it, I wanna resize it to fit maybe my Busy Bee or something, I don't know. Maybe just to, let's do that. It will automatically resize your mold for you or your recipe and it changes everything. It changes your additives, your lye water, everything. And you can resize a lotion and it will it will change everything for you, which is really nice because you can 
Let me, no. Copy this recipe and come over here to percent and then, she, well, I wanna do 60 ounces of base oil. But doing that does not change any of this, your additives. I do put every sale into Soapmaker 3, yes. Every single sale. I'm really quite, uh, I I just I just do everything in the software. I I do everything I possibly can. well I, I shouldn't say that because there's functionalities that I don't use. But every purchase, every uh, business expense, my bank. So like if I go to which is this is pretty cool too. So if I go to list of all purchases, I'm gonna do other expenses. And you can see, let's see, category. I have my bank fees. I have my fees for the boutique. Or well, while I have credit card fees that I have to pay the boutique, I also have my rent space. I had to buy an ent uh, entity report this year. A pegboard, I bought a pegboard for my craft show. There's my flight. Um, these are our craft show fees I put in here. I am a patron of Keeley, so I put that in here. Uh, my Soap Challenge Club, that's education to me. I put that fee in here. Any office supplies, anything I buy at all goes in here. Any money leaving my pocket goes in here. Piping tips at Walmart, uh, silicone molds from Amazon, everything. And then uh, <clears throat> I can drill down on that as well. But yeah, oh, I was gonna show you. This is what I was gonna show you. So like if I go to, let's say this, and I want to view my order, I can repeat this. So if you have the same things going out of your account every single month, I can repeat this and it will bring in all of those fees for me in one click. And then I just change the date and if I, you know, like, <laughs> I, I'm still using the wording subscription fees for October. Uh, no, <laughs> that was last month or whatever. But I, I just need to take that for October away. But yeah, you can repeat that. So that's handy. Oh my gosh, Wendy. Oh, so Wendy's saying that in Illinois they have county and city taxes and you have to pay that? See, I only have to pay state sales tax and they're all different? Oh my gosh, that would be a nightmare. Uh, Diane, feel free to explain the taxes if you, if you would like because I just never really could understand that and I never could understand the, um, what is it, when you're... Let's just do like I I don't remember there was something that I, I was like I don't really understand the tax in that section and I don't remember what what that section is uh, gosh that sounds like that sounds painful so for a craft show here's how I do it I <clears throat> I know exactly so credit cards, I do charge taxes for. So anybody pays to credit card, I do. I put it in as a miscellaneous sale on my Shopify point of service app. I just do a miscellaneous sale, I charge tax. Uh, I feel like taking 7% out of my charge plus three on top for the credit card fee is asking a little much of me. <laughs> so those sales are taxed and cash sales are not. I take care of taxes for that. So I figure out how much of my sales are taxed. And then I come through here, and the only way I know to do that is I just start from top to bottom, and I input all of my sales until I hit that number of where the I've met my tax 
requirement or I've already collected those taxes. So let me just kind of play around it a little bit. Um, so if I sell this at $5, I'm gonna say taxed and then I'm gonna come down here and I'll just do five at $5. And so all of this is just tax one and it is, it is collecting tax. So if I sold $80.25 with tax, once I hit that number, then I go through and I will put five and I will like, then I change that to tax included. You see this little asterisk? And then I input the rest of the sales until I have all my sales entered into this. And that's just how I do it. And so I will have some of these with tax and some of them without or included. Uh, and then for my craft shows, I you will see I have a Beach, Beach Grove Craft Fair. I have a, oops, can't, yeah, let's go ahead. Putnam County car show I was at at one point. I have Christmas in July open house, Cornerstone Christian Academy. I have all of my craft shows as a uh, customer. Uh, so Putnam, Fountain County Spring Market, I don't even remember that one. Greencastle Christmas Market, the middle school had a craft show at one point. Uh, so that way I like doing that because then I can go through and I can go to my reports and look at all sales history. And if I want to look at, let's do, let's just do Covered Bridge because I look at this a lot. Well, every year. And so I can change my date to, how long have I been doing Covered Bridge? And then I'm going to change this. I didn't do it in 21. <laughs> I didn't think I had. So let's do. All right. So in 2023, I can see at the Cover Bridge Festival, that was my sales. And you can see some were taxed and some weren't. That's my tax. That's what I paid in taxes to the state. Uh, and then, so I can say, okay, well that was 23, let's look at 24, or no, 23. That was 22, sorry guys. Oh shoot, hang on. I need to change this. There it is. All right, so there's 22. And that was my sales and what I owed for taxes. And then I can say, okay, well, what I do last year? And I changed these to 23. That was my sales, pretty close. But I like going through here and seeing how much I made at a craft show and whether it's worth my coming back or not, or if I'm increasing my sales. So I really like doing that. Well, Wendy, at least you don't have to like figure that out yourself. Oh. <laughs> oh. All right, any questions? Because we've been on going on an hour with 10 minutes of me trying to get my camera to work so you guys didn't get to see my face today. Dang it, I put makeup on for nothing. <laughs> I don't wear makeup since surgery. <laughs> Uh, you're welcome, Corey. A little laid back. It's just me getting back into the uh, swing of things. I do have a flaming candle. I bought some of their fragrance oils and I thought I would either do a live or I would do a tape. Do you guys have a preference between lives and tapes? I was gonna do this yesterday and then, uh, it, but it was my dad's birthday and, and we were getting together as a family, so. I didn't want to do it yesterday. Uh, that's why I did it on a Sunday. 
um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, let me know if you think I live or, or just tape and, and watch my reactions. There's a lot of florals in this one. <laughs> All right, guys, I think I'm going to be off of here and go get, go go back to work tomorrow. Hope for the ones that are in the path of the eclipse, have fun with that. Uh, all right, Wendy, live or taped? What do you want? Wendy, you decide. <laughs> and Corey, you guys decide. What do you want, live or taped? I can do another live next week and maybe I'll get my camera to work by then. I said I was trying to get my camera into my other computer so I didn't have to do screen sharing because my monitor in this room is so small. I have to like hunch over and, and really try to find, see it. Um, so uh, I couldn't get that. I fought that. I don't know. It's been a mess as usual. Lotion burrs are good. Oh, football shaped lotion burrs. How fun. I don't have it. I, you know, clearly I have trouble with the gloss. <laughs> but I really like talking to you guys. So I have fun with the lives. Uh, I think I'll do a live. Maybe I'll do it next week um, and, and get it. Yeah, I, I have fun talking to you guys like one like like this. I don't know what the word is for this. It's not really face to face, but I I have fun with them. Um, dang, I'm getting too old for this freaking technology though. <laughs> Five or ten years ago, it was a lot easier. It's it's a true thing. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go take some ibuprofen. <laughs> You guys have a wonderful week and stay safe. And um, thanks for being here. I really got, gosh, I appreciate you guys so much. So 